Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of Building WordPress Themes. I'm sure you have been enjoying the series where we are building theme from scratch and understanding about how WordPress works. So in this video we're going to learn about how to add style sheets and scripts. So generally if it's a traditional HTML you would probably include a link tag like so and then add the style sheet like style.css let's say if you create a file like this right so if you there was a file available let's go into our let's go into our themes Aquila so let's say if there's a style sheet available you'll just include it like this in the head tag but in WordPress we don't do that we actually use a function because there are some other uh, style sheets that are available that WordPress also uses and then it also gives us a lot more options when we are including it dynamically so let's let me show that to you so, let, so let's go to functions.php and here this is the function basically so what we're going to do is there is an example here down at the bottom so we're going to create a function and we'll name it as uh, so the name the theme name is Aquila so let's prefix that to avoid any clashes and Q U to avoid any name clashes Q U E scripts and then we'll do an add action and the hook name is WP and Q scripts if you want to learn more about what are hooks? I've explained that. There's an entire series for that. You can learn about it, almost like 38 videos about different hooks used in WordPress, starting from scratch. And this will actually be the function name. This is the hook name. So when we have the, so on this hook, this function will be fired. When the script reaches this hook, the function will be fired, which will be Aquila and QScripts. And then we just need to include the style sheet. So we'll say WP NQ style. So this is the function. It takes different parameters. The first parameter is the handle. So handle is kind of a unique name. We can name it anything that we want. So I'll probably say style sheet. Okay, and then we need the path basically. So source, which means the complete uh, absolute URI. Okay, so there is a function called get template directory URI. So this is going to give us the path up until your Aquila, and then we can add like dot style.css. Right, like I just want to show it to you. If I print it, see what you get. So, take a look, it gives me the absolute URL up until my theme, and then I can just say dot style dot css like add a slash over here so this will give me the complete path up until my style sheet but if you are including the style sheet which is style dot css there is a direct function for that as well so take a look here you can see it says get style sheet uri so this function actually is going to give me the direct path up until the style dot css so i can actually use that instead so let's copy this. So what was made our job easier by you know providing us different functions and it saves a lot of time as well. So let's go ahead and use this function. So I'm gonna remove that. So this is will be this will be the path, this will be the source. And let's go further. What else do we have? So next one is dependency. Does it have any dependency on a different style sheet? So 
one advantage you can think of is that programmatically you can decide which style sheet will load first. So for example there was another style sheet over here uh, and get template directory URI dot let's say there was a file log, like main.css so you can decide that which one you want to load first so the next parameter is basically the dependency so inside of the dependency if you put okay this will be like main okay uh, so this is the hook name so if you pass style sheet over here which means this has a dependency on this one so this will load first even though you have called this function on top still it will have a dependency of style sheet so it will only load after this after this one okay this one right so all right this is just to show you that's what it is but we can get rid of that for now because we don't have any other style sheet for now so let's keep it empty we don't have any dependency and then version number so this is pretty useful because what happens is that sometimes your styles are cached by the browser and then when you are in development mode then it becomes difficult for you to do like a hard so then you would probably have to do hard refresh every time so you can change the version number of this style sheet so if the browser finds a different version number then it's going to load the new style sheet so basically you want the version of the so basically they want the version to be changed only when you have made any changes to this file so there's a PHP function called file m time this one and m time so what it does it basically takes the path of the file the absolute path okay and it returns a string which will be the timestamp of the modified time of the file okay so which means every time we make a change to our style sheet it's gonna give us a new version number so new timestamp so I need to get the path so this is going to give me the URI I want the path function available called get template directory so let's take a look what it is it what does it give me so you can see it gives me the file uh, the directory path and that's what we're looking at we want to first reach the directory and then we want to reach out to the style.css so we'll say style.css okay and now if I try to print this see what you get you can even echo it when just printing it see it gave me the timestamp if I refresh it the timestamp doesn't change just because I haven't modified the style.css. Now if I go and modify it, if I put like body color red, see what happens. Notice this is the before this is the timestamp before modifying. If I refresh, you can see the timestamp has changed. Now again if I refresh it doesn't change unless I modify it. So I again I remove this, refresh again it's modified so this is pretty cool actually because with the help of the file m time we are actually able to get a new version number each time so this value that you see over here will be the version number so let's take a look here so this is the version number so we got that you can have string boolean null and all of that stuff then it talks about media all so take a look here it explains over here although this is optional like these all the fields are this all parameters are optional this one is required so in the media so media for which style sheet has been defined except media types like all print and screen or media queries like orientation and portrait so which screen uh, you know which media screen that you want it to be like so I want it to be like on all screen sizes so I'll put all oops So I'll put all over here. Okay. Awesome. So now I'm expecting that my style sheet should be included. If I go on to my front end and refresh, and then I go ahead and check the page source and look for style.css, 
you can see that it's already included and also giving me the version number which means that if the file is modified then the version number will change let's click on that there you go perfect that's awesome so I have to worry about the browser caching etc